Volkswagens? You thought they were a dying breed? Well, guess again. They're alive and living well here at Irvine Meadows at the world's largest car show and swap meet. Hi, everybody. I'm your host for the day, Dino Don Chamberlain with Raz Video. And we've got a host of things to bring you along with a host of people to talk to. So join us with Raz Video for some upcoming adventures. Also joining me today will be the Soto Club president, Steve Nye. Steve, take it away for us. There was a lot of nice bugs out at this show. This one is a really unique one. It has many different variety of things on it. This one has rock guards, trim rings, the it's early style. Rings on the uh, wheels, doesn't it there, Steve? Yeah, it does. It also has the early style antenna. And fender skirts. It, yeah, fender skirts, and he used a colored fender beading around them also, it looks like. The back window in this car was something that came out in the early 70s, and it looks like they're starting to introduce it again. So this it's a kit transplant, would you say? Basically. I think it's made out of plastic. This, the company was called Bug Hatch many years ago that made these. This is an early sunroof. Looks like to be about a 58 or 59. Has pop-out windows to go along with the pop-out back window. The color of the car is very nice, a very pretty color for a bug. This guy has a lot of different things on this car. I don't know that the W deck lid came standard on this model, but it does go along with the split window conversion. Oh. Here I am with one of my friends, Jim, from the VW Classic. Well, my car's been, we've been building it for four years, and we just finished it. My dad bought it for me originally uh, four years ago, had weeds growing out of it, and uh, it is what it is today. My dad never got to see it done, and I built in a memory of my dad, Gerald Owens. Well, Joe, this one's for you. What a beautiful, outstanding vehicle. Belongs to Jim here. Jim, thanks for coming down to the VW Classic. This is a very nice example of a 57 Deluxe Bug. This car looks like it was well restored. Originally, black cars came with red interior like this. It appears that he has all the right floor matting, carpeting, and everything. Somebody did a real nice job on this interior. The seats look nice. Look at even the steering wheel and dash look excellent in this car. The taillights are in the proper position. This car has all of the detail work done to the motor, including stickers and all the fine little things that need to be detailed on a motor. This car looks like it was a well-done car, very show quality. Nice work, looks like powder-coated sheet metal, rear apron, the paint, shine, everything is really nice on this car. A 57 Bug had a lot of different features on it from some of the 57, 58. Notice the small rear window and the big engine vents in the back. This one had the American style bumpers with the overriders and guards. Notice the lack of gauges in the interior. These models didn't come with many frills. The little lever on the floor was for your extra gallon of gas because you didn't have a gas gauge to go by. If you ran out of gas, you just reached down and flipped the lever and you had an extra gallon of gas to get you to a gas station. White wall tires are pretty popular on these restorations. A company called Lucas in Long Beach produces these white wall tires for specialty cars. They're about the only ones anymore. You can't just go in anywhere and buy tires. This Volkswagen insignia was a factory option and a lot of the dealers put them on the car. The crest came on the cars all the way up until the early 60s. This guy has personalized California license plates on it, which many states now offer. The front blinkers on this one say that it's an American model. If it didn't have the front blinkers, it would have semi-fours, and it would be a European model. This is another black deluxe of about the same vintage. Notice the spare tire tool kit. This flipped open, and there was an assortment of tools in case you broke down. This guy's really an aficionado. Look at all the buttons he's collected for his hat. I bet that thing's heavy. Okay, you know, I'll tell you what. Earl Scheib offers paint jobs for $29.95. I offer cars for $49.95, and I'm telling you what, we're trying like heck today to sell this. Would you buy this car for $49.95? Uh, no, sir. Oh, no, come sir. on. 48 bucks. No, I don't think so. The door's open. Oh, uh, take the hubcaps off. I'll give it to you for $45. Uh, well, what's wrong with the top? I see it's kind of folded, folded back there a little bit. He it? notice it's a convertible. It's He's going up, folks. $47.5. And uh, these visors, I don't know too much about these visors. $48.50. They don't look like they're original to me. Folks, this is a rummage. This guy doesn't even know what the hell he's got here. Well, Dino? Romeshes were kit cars that were made in the 50s and early 60s in Germany. They were aluminum bodied kit cars on a Volkswagen chassis. This one here is an early model one with suicide doors. Note the strange dash configuration, oval window dash 
uh, speaker grill and all the switches and everything. Looks like something from the James Bond movie. It was more than that. This car has many features on it that the early Romeshes have. This car has strange taillights. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. The color, too. I don't know about yellow, but uh, it was a real unique body style, wasn't it? Great looking body lines on this. It's probably set the standards be way before its time. And uh, I believe it's the only one that I've, I've seen probably in 18 years of Volkswagen business. Well, I don't think they sold a whole bunch of them being so innovative for their time. They were probably far and few between, and this one is probably lucky that it's still around. I've only heard of about 10 or 15 Romeshes anywhere in the world, and I don't know how many of them really are early ones. The later ones look entirely different than this one. These early Romeshes resemble an awful lot the early Mercedes 190s. The little fender puffs above the wheel wells there were very reminiscent of 190, including the dash, the seating arrangement, and everything. Well, come to think of it, they almost look like the early Porsche Speedsters also. Look at that rear jump seat that's in there sideways for one more person to sit. I don't know if the chrome on the door panels is original or not, but I like the way the interior is done. It takes on the effect of something of that era. The little door pulls on the inside of the door were produced by Empey for a long time, and you see a lot of them on the 356 Porsches as well as the early Bugs. The car looks quite handsome with the top up, and it has nice body lines. The front has no anything but headlights. It really looks kind of barren and empty. I noticed the front bumper has overriders and tall guards on it, and the back bumper doesn't. I don't know which was supposed to be correct, but this car is well presented just as it sits. The hubcaps with the plain emblems were very true to Romesh, and they had some kind of strange trim rings that used to go with them also. This one uses split window window winders and has nice holstering carpet. This emblem on the side of this car was put on by the dealerships in different countries over in Europe, just like they do back in the eastern states of the United States. This car is a standard model, and it has no chrome and no trim of any sort. This one has big logo hubcaps, which were not correct for the year of the car, but they do look nice. Standard models had no chrome of any sort, and even the headlight rings and bumpers were as they are in this car here. Hi, have you ever been to one of these events? No, I never have. Well, how'd you hear about it? I uh, read about it in Hot VW's magazine. Well, how long have you been here today? I've been here for about two and a half hours so far. And what do you think? I think it's great. What do you think? I really like it. Yeah. There's a lot of split windows at meets like this. Here's a few fine examples. This green one looks pretty nice. What an unusual color. It's a 52 by the license plate. Correct bumpers for these are awful hard to find with the groove down the middle and the small guards. Note the configuration of the trunk lid light. This one here, the guy purchased that day for about $4,500. Looks like it's running pretty smooth. That's a correct motor with a flat top distributor cap on it. This car has original cloth upholstery in it and many of the features that came on the 52 Bug. This one has a dimple gear shift knob, which is very hard to find. Note the turn signal lever on the column. That was added later on. This car probably was in Europe and had turn signals put on it. The car looks to be in pretty good shape, but it looks as though it needs a little bit of restoration work done to it. The color of it is definitely not correct. That color is probably something that somebody liked later on. This split uh, shows chrome rims, has the other kind of bumpers on it, and has been lowered slightly. The guy definitely didn't hurt the car any by doing this, though, because it still looks very appealing. It's also a sunroof model and has a nice black paint job on it. These cars have the chrome on them, and they were deluxe models. The standard models, like we say, didn't have chrome. This one has a nice fog light in the front, original roof rack, and many other accessories. It also has the grooved bumpers, and also they have round horn grills on the split window bugs. This one here looks like it has stickers in the window from past club affiliations. This one here is another shot of the brown one. The white wall tires on this car are probably pretty rare if this has 16-inch wheels. Here's another dealer tag. This one appears to be from a Volkswagen dealer in Germany. This one has a couple dents in the fenders and stuff, but 
brown horn girl fenders are pretty hard to find. You like it out here today? Yeah, it's great. All right, I want you guys to give it a peace sign right here in the old lens. All right. VW Classic ranks number one. As in many of the other VW meets, the vendors are the biggest part. A lot of people come looking for these unique t-shirts, signs. Look, there's Porsche Avenue. These signs are quite unique to have in your den or wherever you have your VW memorabilia yet. They have all different kinds. See, there's bus ones, there's VW Circle. All the t-shirts and stuff really bring a lot of people. There are also many vendors out there selling new parts. Here's Wolfsburg West from La Habra, California, and next to him is Chuck's Convertible Parts from Corona Del Mar, California. Chuck's Convertible Parts has many convertible parts for anybody restoring a convertible. There's the Casablanca ceiling fan truck. He's also a major sponsor. Wolfsburg West has many different things. Here's a nice display for pop-outs. Many of the other swap meet things were out with the cars. Anywhere else, these VW flags would have been quite unique, but at the VW Classic, they're just commonplace items. These are some great people, folks, all coming to the VW Classic here in the Irvine Meadows here in downtown Irvine. Here I have with me somebody from England, my buddy, Mark Kirkham. Kirkham, and how, what made you decide to come here, Mark? Uh, we came over for uh, three weeks vacation, and we were uh, fitting three shows in, the California Caravan in Sacramento yep. two weeks ago. And uh, then we did the Soto meet yesterday and then down here for the Classic. Well, I think you put me on with the accent. What do you think? No, it's true. Yeah, so, where are you from? Where are you from? Boston in England. Boston in England. I think it's Boston in uh, Massachusetts. No, yeah, no, we've got the original one. All right. What do you got to say to your fans out there, Mark? Uh, well, we love California. Here's a nice panel that showed up. It appears to be about a 60. It has the round glass taillights and it's in the factory dove blue color. The blinkers have been painted blue on the inside for effect. This bus has safari windows, and it has the later style mirrors that they've turned sideways for easy visibility. This bus was at the Soto Meet the day before, and it's quite a nice bus. It looks like it has 914 bucket seats, and the dash looks ultra stock. Yeah! Here at the VW Classic, the San Jose boys go wild! Woo! Yeah, bravo! Give me! Yo! Five, right on. All right. VW Classics, folks, has it all. Yum, 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 yum. This is a nice late model double cab. He's been in the show circuit for quite a few years. Note the aluminum insides on the side gates. That's quite a feat to have those done. This guy's done quite a few things to the interior. Konnichiwa, Minasan. <laughs> oh, they speak English. I'm sorry. This is Mr. Sakioka. How you doing, pal? And this is one of your boys here. How are you? Hey, Cal. How you guys doing here today? Fine. Fine? How are you today? Fine. And how are you today? Fine. Good. We're at the VW Classic with the beautiful Sakioka transporter, man. This thing is awesome. In the past five or so years that we've been selling cars, we've seen this bus at a lot of shows. The changes every time it comes out are phenomenal. That dash is just unbelievable for a 68 double cab or later. This car has a beautiful interior, full roll bar, top, bottom, and a crash bar in the front so if he got hit he wouldn't get hurt. He has full harnesses in there. He has everything set up for the kids so they're safe. He has done major work to this bus. The bottom of this bus has been completely stripped, taken care of, undercoated. It's got disc brakes, alloys, sh brand new shocks. This bus is just unbelievable. He also uses it once in a while as a daily driver, so that makes it kind of unique in its own respect. This car has been a lot of work, but it's also been a lot of fun. Roy's had a good time with this car and really likes showing it. He's won a lot of awards. This bus came from up in Canada. It's very unique paint job, and the interior was just beautiful. This guy had some real wild ideas, and when they all came together, they made one beautiful car. Here's a fine example of an early double cab split windshield. Has safari windows, roof rack, alloys. Very nicely done. Hey, dudes, what's happening? All right. Right on. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the bus boys, and I do mean bus boys. Where are you guys from? Corona! I like to drink that once in a while. Do you too? Yeah. yeah, 
Well, let's get in trouble, folks. Are you guys having a good time here today? Yeah. Can you guys do a high C on the count of three? One, two, three. Woo! This is a 64 panel van belonging to Charlie Hamill from Westminster, California. The color was turquoise, and it should have been used on more models. He had it parked next to the Soto booth, along with my 56 fire truck. They made a nice display. Here was a bus from people that came in from who knows where. They just kind of follow along with the deadheads. In the official hippie van right now, and your name is? Susie. Dan. Brian. What year is this? It's 66. This thing's outrageous, and I don't know whether you folks out there believe it, but they've never been pulled over once. <laughs> Peace, love, to you. This is just one of the many buses that showed up at, at the meet. This one here has been painted all kinds of different things, and she painted on it all day long. She added more things to that than you could possibly imagine, and she had a pretty vivid imagination when she was adding things to it. Little eyeballs with legs and mushrooms, all kinds of stuff. She was really into it. Note the peace sign hubcaps and all the graffiti. This is one fun bus for those people, and I imagine they've traveled a lot of miles. Here's a nice red and white semi-deluxe with no sunroof. This one has a unique roof rack. It has the elephant ear style mirrors. This panel van appears to be an early model with the tall tail lights and the early, early style bumpers. The original color looks very nice. Here's one of our happy campers here at the VW Classic. What's your name? Linda. Linda, you're gorgeous. Okay. What do you think about all these Volkswagens? I think they're great. It's neat to watch them. Yeah. I have a bug, but it's uh, not in this kind of shape. <laughs> yeah, we kind of noticed you kind of met us over here at the hippie wagon. Is there any reason? <laughs> Uh, something like that just draws me in. It's yeah. neat. It's like I, a magic bus. I bet being on a bicycle, uh, you get run off the road a lot, so you can appreciate a little chance for peace <laughs> now and then, huh? Yeah, right. Peace. <laughs> there were a lot of different kinds of buses. This is a back view of that early panel van, and in the background right there is a 60 Deluxe. This here is an early single cab, which appears to have a roll bar added to it, and later mirrors like from an aftermarket company. The double cab in the background looks pretty nice and even has a roof rack on it. If you were there, you might have been able to buy it. Here's another view of that panel van. Boy, it sure does look nice. The white wheels and hubcaps were really a standard item. Chrome hubcaps were put on by the dealers as an option. Here's a notch back in the background and another bug with a roof rack. There was all kinds of buses at this place and all colors, it appears. This is a Bestel wagon that came from a special country over in Germany. It was made longer and taller to haul around different things. Hi, Ermine. Yes. How are your driving lessons coming out? Very poorly. Well, you almost badgered into a nice vehicle back there. What's your problem today? Well, on the way here, my battery died, and I had to get a jump start from two Iranian rapists. So I'm really not at my best. Well, it looks like they got you pretty good. <laughs> no, I got them pretty good. Folks, this is Ermine. Say hi. <laughs> This bus is very unique. They made these for special applications. Note the back doors swing open instead of swinging up. There was also a major piece of chrome around the belt line with a rubber strip in it, just like a deluxe. The backup lights were probably added on later in life. This thing was a, a single cab originally that was stretched, lengthened, and the top made on it. The very, very top of it is fiberglass, and the sides are steel. It's a very unique vehicle indeed. The other side has tall doors that go all the way to the roof. When you're inside of the bus, you can stand up, walk around. It's about a six foot tall inside. This bus has very low original mileage on it and all original interior. Here's another example of a yellow and white deluxe. Deluxes are very prevalent at these shows and a lot of people really like them. Folks, here we are right now. We're gonna be talking to some fantastic people here in the, uh, in the bus. Hi, everybody. Hey. hey, hey, we're like happening, bro. What are you guys looking at? The bikini contest. Bikini, where's it at? Over there. Okay, hold on. I'm going inside. Look out, guys. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is incredible. Front row seats with my Soto friends. And boy, I tell you, they're, they're bearing it all right now on stage. Unbelievable. Is this cranking or what? Yeah. Are we having a good time up here?
spider kit car that was on the premises. Cool looking machine. And a lot of Carmen Gias that graced the parking lot as well. Everything from stock to cow look. Yeah, Dino, that is a pretty nice looking Gia. Looks like it should have been in the show. This car here is a nice deluxe with 2.0 Porsche alloys on it. Looks like they're about ready for paint here pretty soon. Here's a couple of clean looking cars right here, Steve. Here's a 67 with Porsche alloys and a black convertible with 2.0 Porsche alloys. Here's a street looking sedan right here, a Cal Looker with alloys, bit lowered. It's got the dash treatment and super good looking paint. And now we're gonna get ready to go on over to the high performance area. Probably heard of the man that started the VW craze, Gene Berg. Well, here's Gary Berg, Gene's elder son. 
Gary, how are you doing out here at the VW doing Classic great, here man. today? Doing real good. All right. Having a good time. And why don't you tell us some of them about your hot rocket, pal? Hey, it's got all the Berg equipment. It's got the five-speed, and we got a full Berg motor, forging crank, and, uh, you know, what can you say? It's all there. What's the compression and what's the size? Uh, it's 2110, and it's uh, 82 by 90.5, and it's uh, seven and a half to one compression. <laughs> Okay, Gary, thanks a lot for showing us your super clean 67 street cow looker. And here's a nice looking drag machine right here that's all street legal. It street legal? I'm off of Sol Malley from the LAPD. That thing ain't street legal. Look at that exhaust. No bumpers. Hey, where are you from? What do you mean, street legal? I drag race it every single day, pal. Yeah, let's see your license and registration. I don't see no smog equipment on that thing. Well, you're lucky. I'm a fellow VW enthusiast. I'll let you go this time, but I wouldn't call this a streetcar by a long shot. Hey, thanks a lot, Officer Howie. I really appreciate it. O'Malley. Hi, everybody. Dino Don here again with one of my crazy buddies, Crazy Joe from Whittier, La Whittier, California. I won't scare you, but VW Classic is good for me. Joe, how you doing, pal? Fantastic. Why don't you tell us about your thing, uh, your car? Uh, which thing? Your car, pal. The thing? The thing. The, the thing. The wild thing. The orange thing or yellow thing? The orange thing. The orange thing, I love it. I'm having a good time. Uh, it kind of gets me in trouble, though. Uh, folks, if you've only been with Crazy a few times before, he's in trouble. Okay. This is a 19 what, Joe? 73. 1973 thing, and it's obviously not stock, is it? Obviously. It's a, a 1900cc Delardo motor. What I tell you, folks, no stalker in this turkey. Mm -hmm. There you have it, the last end of some outrageous stuff in the Cal Look high performance area. And this VW thing was no exception. Hey, thanks a lot for coming out to the VW Classic, guys. This VW thing really gets it on. 1900cc Delorto powered engine. From front to rear, this is a beautiful classic VW thing with lots of horsepower. Check it out! Okay, here I am over at the auto upholstery bin, and we've got lots of stuff here, huh? Okay. Okay, we've got lots of stuff, right? Okay. Okay, uh, we got some great parts. We've got some ashtrays. We've got some sun visors, visors right? Okay. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great interview. Okay. Okay. i tell you what. There's no problem with the language barrier here, right? Okay. Okay. I'll take two tacos, a queso blanca tortilla, and a couple chimichanga. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to some other cars, okay? Okay. Here's a strange one that showed up at the Classic. That's right, folks. This had everything customized from A to Z. We'd probably be calling that a lead sled back in the 50s. This car was chopped about four and a half inches, if not more. Had everything shaved off the car. It had fender skirts, flame job, the dice in the window, louvers. Everything from the front to the back of this car was completely... 50s and I tell you what folks I'm sure you had a Volkswagen back then and if you did you probably went to the drive-in in the car just like this look at the French tin headlights and the louvers and the flames and here we come up to one of the more customized vehicles here it's a kit car pickup truck sedan delivery van it and tell us about this will you it's a 1970 Volkswagen that's been customized to look like a panel wagon and I think it's pretty rad. We think it's pretty rad. Well, it's pretty rad, folks. It's rad. Make me an offer. You can drive it home, please. Today, she means it. All right, thank you, Mrs. Dan Ledbetter. And speaking of Ledbetter, he's the VW editor for VW Trends, and always putting out fine articles and all the events, just like the VW Classic here today. The complete coverage for today's VW Classic should be on the stands very soon from VW Trends. So go to the store and look for the issue of VW Trends with today's VW Classic. There were definitely a lot of custom cars here today at the VW Classic. Here's a 1940 Ford fiberglass kit car in a Volkswagen chassis. There's a lot of kit cars out here at today's VW Classic. 
Now, it gives everybody a great chance to show their kid cars in an atmosphere that other Volkswagens are around. This one here is for sale. It's got the eight spokes. It's, uh, it's in pretty good shape. Somebody buy it. Call him. Here I am with my friend Kevin from Garden Grove. Kevin, what the hell did you do? Did you leave this in the dryer too long or what? No, as a matter of fact, we worked on it till 11.30 last night. We spent four days. You can still smell the paint. We painted it Saturday night. Ah, paint's fresh, folks. Paint's Let's fresh. Get it out here. Is that right? That's right. You had a lot of looky-loos out here? Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. I'm hoping to maybe take a third, but I got a lot of competition on all those guys. Why don't you look into the camera and tell the people how many cars it took you to make this one fine example? Three cars. <laughs> and a lot of busting work, folks. You can get a great deal on one of these little cars out here at the VW Classic. I know Kevin had his car offered for about $5,000, and he came down substantially just to get the car gone so he could finish some more projects. Now, if you look at the car, it has no doors. It barely has a roof, and in fact, what they did, they chopped it off completely and put a convertible tonneau cover roof on top of it. It's got the four-spoke Libra wheels from a Porsche. Uh, the car's... What can I tell you, folks? This thing has been, like, radically shortened. Look at the lines and the features on this beautiful car. This was done in a matter of two days from start to finish. What's your name? My name is Kathy. And your name? Shelly. And your name? Susie. Oh, folks, I tell you, the VW Classics has it all and more. Here's Steve Connect's notchback <laughs> from Bakersfield. Steve uh, has been actively campaigning this car for the last couple of years. He's got a lot of show awards for it, first place, best of show awards, and a uh, special interest vehicle as well. The top comes off, the front hood flips up, the rear engine compartment flips over, and there you see the uh, steering wheel and the telescopic column with the LED gauge uh, layout on the front uh, gauge panel. Uh, suicide doors on this vehicle, four-wheel disc brakes, a lot of chrome, a lot of special stuff. Looks like you put engine mirrors and also a mirror underneath the hood so you can catch more of the detail in the car. What do you think about that idea, Don? This thing is absolutely laid out from front to back. Unbelievable. This thing has won more car show awards than any other car I know of in competition in the Volkswagen ranks on the West Coast. I remember when he used to put it on a turntable and display it at the shows. It sure looked nice then, and it still looks pretty nice now. Yeah, we saw him driving in through the gates in the morning and couldn't quite believe what we were seeing, but uh, nevertheless, he braved the tour from Bakersfield, which is about 180 miles from Orange County, and uh, he did a super job putting this together, and here we take a closer look of the top being taken off of the car right here. I notice it comes off all in one piece. I bet there was a lot of work making that into a big piece like that to come off as easy as it does. I wonder if it seals up when it's wet. Well, Steve, I don't think he drives it uh, anywhere in particular, especially not in the rain. Uh, I guess primarily being that it's a custom show vehicle, he takes the time to just bring it out on sunny days like this or when we have a fine event like the VW Classic. Well, it certainly is a nice car, and you can definitely see there's a ton of work in this baby. Those LED gauges sure look cool. They are the hottest tip nowadays. Most all the show cars are starting to use them, and they really do perform well. That's right, Steve, and if you look closer up on this uh, dash installation, you'll see the telescopic steering, steering column I talked about earlier, the custom SKS dash, the center console shift area, the custom seats. Where did they ever come up with a dash like that, Don? Well, I tell you, Steve, Steve Connect and uh, Chris Addington got together in a primary partnership, and they manufactured these dashboards for Type 3s and also Carmen Gias, and they certainly do look great, and they're made out of one-piece fiberglass. They are definitely the hot tip, and they save an awful lot of work for the guys out there fixing up their cars. They certainly do. And here's George Delfino's Type 3 rendition from Bakersfield also. Now, George trailers this vehicle from all the events he goes to, from Northern California down to the southern tip, Irvine Meadows here in Orange County. Here's a great look at George Delfino's dashboard right here. As we see the three-pronged, uh, I would assume it's an aluminum uh, steering wheel machined out of billet aluminum and there you see the deck lid that's being propped up on the rear hinge area and all the chrome and the aluminum and the polishing and stainless steel everything that makes this thing a beautiful show winner there's a fine example of an early golf blue notchback 
This one happens to belong to Bill Makepeace from Bill and Steve's Type 3 parts in Bellflower, California. There's also a Type 3 Ghia in attendance. I don't know if they came factory with that color, but that looks okay. Here's a six and a half inch chop top race car that's also street legal. It's an early model with a beautiful six and a half inch chop. Here you see the reclining seats on the front of the car. It's painted orange, it has a lot of louvers, and it's got the salt flat disc uh, covers on the wheels. It never ceases to amaze me all the things that can be done to a Volkswagen. This car shows quite a bit of the different things that can be done. Here I am with one of the beautiful chop tops here at the VW Classics, a beautiful red chop top. It took about five years to do. It's a beautiful car. It's about a six and a half inch chop, which is a little bit below the normal limits. But as you can see, the car has styled just wonderfully well. And if you see this thing down the road, you know something's custom on it, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Uh, not even in it, just about. <laughs> it's a chop top. Here we go from the uh, full custom area on over to some super clean convertibles. It looks like these are in the cow look area. There's a lot of lowered versions out there with alloys. Boy, I tell you, Steve, can you imagine how much money is invested in these cars throughout the day that we're looking at right here? Oh, God, there's a lot in the convertibles. Tops, interiors, wood in for the tops. That's all very expensive on the, these cars. That last one we just looked at, I know it had heart tail lenses. Those are hard to come by now, aren't they? Also, the sl vertical slotted deck lid. I understand those are going for about $300 a pop now. At least, if not more. There goes one that they've shaved the trunk lid light off of. Here's a 67 with white walls on it right here for a different kind of a look. Here's a late model convertible with white walls on it. They're Hobbs! Hobbs! Slow down! This late model convertible was for sale that day, along with the silver one next to it. They were almost twins except for the wheels and tires. There was a lot of nice original convertibles. This looks like a lot of late models here. The early convertibles bring out quite a crowd. This is a proud owner of this beautiful 84 Golf. This is Paul Ross. Paul, where do you live? Tarzana, California. And uh, tell me a little bit about the car, will you? Um, the car started off as a small project, and it kind of grew into what you like see here. Like, really grew, huh, Paul? Yeah, exactly. Um, it started off just to be something to drive around, and then little by little, it's turned into this. <laughs> This must be the big window row at the VW Classic. There's a lot of cars in there for sale. This guy has a little bit of everything underneath the hood of his car. Looks like a pretty good little clean 68 bug. Got a lot of weird things on it. Here's Sherm Glass's 66 bug. This color was painted to the car when it was still at the dealer. They usually didn't paint him this color, but it's kind of a nice contrast on this particular car. The white walls also bring it out a little bit, and it has trim rings and a few other little things. This is a standard bug. Notice no chrome, no chrome around it. Mark Bruto at Bugs For You owns this 57 oval window. It has a very beautiful original interior in it. It is also original paint on the outside. These two cars belong to Bob Koch. They're a pair of 54 semi-4 ovals. He spent many years working on these cars, trying to perfect them. He has one of the nicest pairs here that I've ever seen. A lot of these cars are as correct as they can be. Even the engine on the tan one has, still has the Cosmoline on it. It was a brand new long block that he had found. The rest of the cars are detailed in every way. Dash, everything. The interiors in these cars are beautiful. This is a very nice sunroof. Also this one and the one behind it. Sunroofs are real popular in the Volkswagen line. Most people like them better because you got the open spaces. They also bring more money when you go to sell them. This one here is a very nice rendition. It also has white wall tires. We seen this 52 bug earlier in the video, but it's definitely worth a second look. There aren't many nicer than this one. What color is that, Steve? Uh, sort of an olive green? Yeah, I think so, somewhere in that area. This oval window sure is nice. Look at the height of the roof rack. That's the kind they use to clear the sunroof. This bug's a 55 oval window that a friend of mine used to own and he sold. He sold it to a guy and the guy's now added a few accessories to it and dolled it up a little bit, but it still is a beautiful car. 
that color just stands out all the way around. This was a European model. This one here is also a European model oval window. It has the semi fours and it's a nice gray with a weird color combination on the wheels. This red sunroof appears to be between 58 and 60 in that range. It has a lot of accessories. Here's a silver blue oval window. Looks like they're having a little trouble getting it started or they're just pushing it over to the trailer. It sure does look nice. There's a lot of work in that one. He has it for sale. I wonder how much he was asking for it and if he sold it or not. Looks like the end of the day and they're taking it home, so he probably didn't. Did he, Dino? No, I don't think he did, Steve. He was asking a lot of money for that car, and a lot of people looked at it. It certainly was nice, but, well, some people asked just a little bit too much. Here's a fine example of the thing. These bus driver hats were given out by Volkswagen when you test drove a bus. This appears to be a mid-60s high-roof bus that was made by Volkswagen. These were used a lot in Europe, as you can see by the rust in this one. Here's a late model Cowlick bus with the fake alloys on it. It's purple and charcoal color, which looks pretty good on this bus. They got it really low, too. The interior must be really nice. Look at, they've won a few trophies even with this one. It's a walkthrough model, has velour door panels and seats. It looks like they've done a lot of work, and it also looks like they might use it for a daily driver. They probably have the stereo system in here. Oops, there it is right there. It's a CD player that holds 10 cartridges. This bus is equipped for the road. Looks like it has a lot of features on it for to make it an easy driver. These late models drive a lot nicer too when they're lowered. I bet they have a good time in this one riding up and down the beaches of Southern California. Look at that mirror on there. They make some really nice mirrors for these cars nowadays. That one looks like it fits real well and is still usable at the same time. He's also got a fire extinguisher just in case. Well, I know with that CD uh, compact player, I'm sure that they're cruising a lot down by the beach, listening to the CD players and picking up the chicks. Yeah, this bus looks like it'd be good for that. It looks like it'd also hold a lot, too. That sunken license plate piece right there is out of a later model GM car, like an El Camino or a Chevy station wagon. It does work really good, and since they've louvered the deck lid and had no place else to put the license plate, that's a great place for it. Real clean idea. Nothing but a cool looking rockin' bus. That's it. Uh-oh, here comes the stereo equipment. Uh-oh, look at that. Check this out, folks. Unbelievable. They'd be blasting that one. We'd be blasting on that one, Steve. <laughs> Look at the power wattage in those units. Take it away, Steve. Come on, I'm getting tired. Sounds just like it, Dino. Sounds just like it. Well, hey, to each his own, and I think it's great. If they enjoy it, that's all the more power. There's an awful lot of money in a system like that. There's an awful lot of money in a bus like this when they get it all finished. Looks like they did a really nice job. Even the paint job looks good on that car. The Rockin' Bus. It's a California special, all right. Here's a good look at one of the Brazilian import bottles. Here's a great looking car for only 7,800 bucks. Brand new Brazilian bug from Brazil. It's got the early style and the late style integrated into one car. And here's a good-looking Volkswagen convertible. Boy, I bet you I don't know anybody out there with a good-looking BMW to trade for this beat-up car. Folks, this is one of the more fantastic offers out here at the VW Classic. A 54 barn door for only $15. Ah, $1,500. What a deal. Love this car. You too can buy this car or buy a videotape. We'll see you next time. Well, there you have it, everybody. For Raz Video, I'm Dino Don Chamberlain, your host, and my co-host, Steve Nye. Oh, we're signing off from this video. I hope everybody had a good day, and these videos are great to show the people back east what's happening in a VW event. If they get a chance, they can come out and visit. Look for the upcoming advertisements in your local magazine. Remember, VWs aren't something you just own. They're a lifestyle.
everybody, and welcome to the sixth annual Soto Meet here in downtown Garden Grove. Welcome to the Soto Meet in Garden Grove, California, not far from Disneyland, USA. My name is Terry Clanton for Raz Video. This is probably the largest collection of antique Volkswagen buses anywhere in the world. These people have come from different parts of the world to be here. Let's take a look at these fine buses. <laughs> 